Welcome to the Inspire and Learn series. We are TMG Yachts, a multi-award winning dealership in Australia, specialising in multi hulls power and sail. Join us as our expert team teach you all about anchoring, docking, rigging, sail trim, maintenance and so much more so you can build confidence in your boat handling ability. In this episode, we will demonstrate how to fly a Code Zero on a catamaran. Enjoy! A Code Zero sail sits perfectly between a traditional Genoa and an asymmetrical downwind spinnaker. Today, we're going to have a look at the rigging on a Code Zero on board this Lagoon 46 catamaran, how to hoist it and how to fly it. My name is Joe Fox from the team at TMG Yachts and welcome back to another Inspire and Learn episode on board Sydney Harbour. So it's best to think of a Code Zero as a large Genoa and you fly it in a similar way. It furls around a forestay or around a torsion cord in this case instead of the forestay that the Genoa is mounted on. We can see here on the deck in front of me we have the Code Zero snaked nicely backwards and forwards. It's really like a big sausage. Uh, inside is a very flexible uh, torsion cord which when furling the sail twists nice and evenly along uh, to furl the sail. So similar operation uh, to a Genoa but it's a bigger lighter sail. We can see this sail on the foredeck in front of me here. This is the head of the sail and on the head there is a spinner. Now this spins round in conjunction with the furling unit at the bottom of the sail. The spinner or the head of the sail is connected to this two to one halyard which goes all the way up the mast to a point just above where the Genoa and the forestay connect. The foot of the sail is down here. Now this is on a single line furler. This one's made by Facnor. It's a 4500 model from Facnor and it's a continuous line furler. So instead of the uh, furling line uh, building up on a drum like we see on the Genoa just in front of me, it's a continuous line that actually runs all the way down the starboard side of the boat. So we can furl this sail from quite far back on the boat. There is a ratchet system uh, on this furling unit as well to stop it unfurling uh, when it's not being used. So the third and final corner of the sail is the clue. Now, because this is rolled up in a big sausage, the clue is actually here. It's about one third of the way up the sail when it's hoisted. And you can see here, I have a red sheet and a green sheet, some important starboard trimming sheets. These are already fixed to the clue and they are run back through the turning blocks and up to the winches on the flybridge. It's important to note that this sail sits in front of the Genoa. So if I'm hoisting the sail on my starboard side, the port sheet must run around the front of the forestay here. You can see it just here before it runs aft to the winch and the turning block. That means when we furl it to stow it, it can easily come out on either side and doesn't get caught around the forestay. So this sail is pretty much prepped and ready to go. Uh, I've got all my uh, fixing points attached, my sheet, my halyard is attached, we just saw that. I've just attached the foot of the sail now to the, uh, the bobstay or the bowsprit that we have on the front of the vessel and then we should be ready to hoist it up. Typically I'll do this before we leave the dock. On a day like today, we've got 15 knots of wind blowing. It's just easier to get this prepped and set, especially on the foredeck here, prepped and set before we leave the dock. It's one less thing to think about when we're out there. So there's a snap shackle which goes on to the bowsprit there. And the sail is attached to the bowsprit, to the halyard and to the sheets. So we're all good to hoist. So to hoist the sail, we do all of this from the helm station to follow me. So the Lagoon 46, the spinnaker halyard uh, runs to the starboard side of the flybridge. Now it's important when you're hoisting the Code Zero, if you have help, get someone on the bow to pull the sail away from the rig as it's going up or on a windy day like today, the wind coming from behind us, it'll push the sail off the rig as we're going up. So we know the Code Zero is all ready on the foredeck. I've got the halyard in my hand here and whilst it's light, initially I can actually pull it up by hand. I have closed the jammer. Importantly, I've closed it so that if I let go, it does not fall back down and all my hard work comes undone. I can, feeling it, oh, I can feel it getting a little bit heavier now. So at this point, you know, it's early in the day, it's gonna be a hot day. So I'm gonna just load it on so we don't get too sweaty. And up we go. So 
So there we are, the sail is up. I pulled it on quite tight. I'm gonna use it immediately now, as soon as we get out. Um, so I have pulled it quite tight. If you were just hoisting it for use later in the day um, and sailing on the Genoa in the meantime, then I'd leave it a little bit slack on the halyard just so that you're not over tensioning the sail. But in order for it to furl and unfurl uh, efficiently when uh, you are using it, the halyard does need to be very tight. So that torsion cord has enough structure in it to swivel both the bottom and the top simultaneously. So I can feel there it is nice and tight. The winch did load up quite a bit and that's the best indication of a tight line or a tight halyard is when that winch starts to load up. Before we head off the dock, I'll just talk through the furling mechanism here. So this is the continuous line. You see I'm pulling the line and it moves the continuous drum. If I change direction on this Facknor drum, it hits a ratchet and it can't come unfurled. So I could pull on the sheet now and that's not gonna come unfurled. So that's how we want it to be. Uh, when we're setting off, especially leaving the dock on a day like today, we do not want it coming unfurled accidentally. So once it's hit the ratchet, take these sheets and secure them nicely on a nearby cleat or similar. And that'll hold the Code Zero safely. When we're sailing, and we'll do this, you'll see me doing this later, when we're sailing to release the ratchet, we simply rotate the furler the other way and it unlocks the, the pin and the ratchet and then it'll come out nice and freely. So changing direction, it locks and then it unlocks. If you carry on, if it sounds confusing, it probably is, it makes a lot of sense when you're doing it. It's just one more thing before we leave the dock to keep the furling line nice and tidy. We have on the stanchions here, two-way furling leads, or fair leads, I should say. And these run down the side deck to keep the furling line out of the way and tidy. Goes through a block at the back of the vessel here, or the stern of the vessel, on a bungee. So this stays relatively tight and out of the way. Let's go for a sail now. The weather we have today is 15 knots from the south. It's gusting to 20, but it's slowly dropping off. So perfect weather for demonstrating this sail. Let's get the boat off the dock. I said before, it's halfway between a Genoa and a asymmetrical spinnaker. Often it's called a Jenica. A Jenica is a blanket term for a few different types of downwind sails. This is really a code zero. It's a, you know, it's less of a spinnaker and more of a Genoa. The sailcloth is kind of a medium weight. So it's kind of halfway again between that very light spinnaker sailcloth and the heavy Dacron that we have on the jib. The code zero itself has been around for about 25 years. They were first seen uh, as part of the Whitbread Round the World race before it became the Volvo Ocean Race and more recently the Ocean Race. And that was on, you know, 70 foot monohulls to get um, good speeds in the light airs. And that's really where it comes into its own on a catamaran uh, like we're on now. In light winds, you can add three or four knots and sometimes even double your speed depending on the wind angle. <music> worth mentioning and discussing now when you would use a code zero so primarily it's, it's a downwind sail you can fly this on the beam uh, but the stronger the wind becomes the lower you have to carry the sail obviously the apparent wind is very important it's a very big sail we don't want to overstress the rigging or the sail itself the rule of thumb you know with this kind of sail is probably 15 knots is your your limit um, which is about what we got today, so it's good to really show this um, powered up and, and um, pulling the boat along nicely. In very light airs, five, six knots, you can actually go maybe even just a little bit um, higher than, than a beam reach, uh, but it does start to become quite inefficient because you have to strap it so tight, it, it really just acts like more of a uh, you know, kitchen worktop up in the sky. <music> So we've just made our way up to a nice upwind position on Sydney Harbour, we're just outside Rose Bay actually, and we've got a good you know, three or four kilometres all the way down to Manly here. So before we turn away from the wind, I'm just gonna prep the sail, the Code Zero to go. So 
We have got the full main hoist at the moment, which is perfect in these conditions. The next thing I do will be to release the sheets that are secured on the bow cleats for the Code Zero, and then I'll run the sheets, uh, both of them, up to the winches here for controlling them on the flybridge. And one of the most important things to do when you're getting all the lines ready is to make sure that the sheets and all the lines that are gonna run are free to do so because when the sail comes out there will be a lot of pressure in it especially with this wind and the lines will be running quite fast so both sheets are free to run and now i'm going to take the working sheet uh, which in this case is the port sheet that runs all the way down my port side it comes outside of the rail through a turning block and then up here to this winch which we did use to hoist the main is now redundant and we put the sheet directly onto there and put it in the teeth. So this side is set to go. We're going to hoist the code zero on starboard tack. So the sail is going to come out on our port side. So I've loaded the port sheet onto the winch. The last thing I do before we turn and hoist is we check that the starboard sheet on the other side or the lazy sheet is completely free to run because the last thing we want is that getting caught and then it disrupts our beautiful unfurling. So I'll do that now and then we should be good to go. Lazy sheet off and all free to run. So it can be very tempting uh, when you're running these sheets, especially the lazy one, to put a stopper knot or a figure of eight knot in the end. Uh, don't do that. This is a spinnaker we're flying, despite the fact it's smaller than a spinnaker. If we put a stopper knot in the end and we need to dump the sail and let go both sheets to control it, you'll never get your stopper knot undone as it goes through the, uh, the block there on the back. So we are now turned downwind, we know the sail is set to go. The wind is about 140 to 50 degrees uh, behind us. This is about as deep as we could go. Uh, we're just going deep to come around um, the point up ahead of us, but we're all set to go. So the last thing I do before we unfurl is to unlock the furling drum. In the same way that I talked about at the beginning of the video, I go backwards and then forwards, and I can feel on this furling line that it is loose now. As soon as I pull on one of those sheets, the sail will unfurl. There is no wind in the sail, it's not unfurled, so I can let this go now, and it doesn't unfurl. I wouldn't ever store it like this because it could flap loose in high winds, uh, but we know all set to go. Let's go and pull on that port sheet. Okay, so we're all ready to go. The sheet is in the winch, let's unfurl. And that has unfurled absolutely beautifully. We are quite far downwind, so I'm not gonna pull it on too tight. We're gonna leave plenty of sail out, so it's beautifully catching the wind. So in terms of trimming the Code Zero, it can all be done just similar to the way you trim a Genoa. You're looking at the telltales on the windward and the leeward side of the sail to guide you on how to trim the uh, sail. And you can learn more about that in one of the previous episodes that we have done. The wind is coming on the nose a little bit now, so, I'm just gonna sheet in a little bit. There's quite a bit of pressure in this sail now. And we are flying along, we're doing 9.3 knots in 15 knots of wind. That's absolutely incredible. The boat feels really alive. It feels, um, got lots of power, quite sprightly, if I might say. Beautiful downwind sailing. It really doesn't get much better than this. She's a lovely sail, this one. Gotta be one of my favorite sails. Absolutely stunning and almost doubles our head sail area, so. Probably more actually, if you look at the numbers. Important, when you do have this sail up, you do have a bit of a blind spot. Um, there is more than just me on the boat today, so I have got people on board looking out uh, in my blind spots, obviously from the helm, a little bit restricted view. If you were sailing offshore, it really wouldn't matter. You know, you'd have your eye on the radar, the AIS. You could duck your head below this every once in a while. But otherwise, how perfect. downwind sail we don't tack with this sail we're only jibing um, and there's an element of complexity to it because it's not like a Genoa that can just flick across if it's on a self tacker or if it's not on a self tacker you just pull in the other sheet because the code zero is in front of the forestay so in order to jibe it at a, a cruising jibe 
you have to furl the Code Zero, jibe the vessel, and then unfurl it on the other side, which is what I'll do now. Those of you that are a bit more advanced, or those of you that have uh, do a bit of racing on be it cats or monohulls, you can do a racing jibe, which is where you thread the sail between the, the Code Zero sail itself and the force day. Now this is quite technical, you've got to get the timing right, you've got to turn very slowly and pull on the lazy sheet at exactly the right moment to get the sail through before it fills with air on the wrong side of itself. So we're going to do the cruising jibe now and we'll demonstrate that to you so you can see how it works. In order to jibe the vessel, I'm going to start by heading downwind a little bit further. The speed will drop off, the wind will decrease a little bit, my apparent wind. I'm going to ease the sheet a little bit. And really what I'm trying to do is reduce the apparent wind on the vessel so that it's easier for me to furl when I go to the bow. Heading to the bow now, this is my furling line. And I've got a crew member now on the sheet ready to ease that. As they ease that, I'll furl in down here. Okay, ready to ease. So the sail's easing. And it's just a case of pulling. It's quite light. There's not a lot of wind in it. We're going downwind, so the apparent wind is quite low. They're keeping a little bit of tension on that sheet. If they don't keep tension on the sheet, the sail turns into a flag and becomes quite aggressive in the way it furls and you can get bubbles of air and it's a very messy wrap. That's a beautiful wrap just because we had that little bit of tension on the sheet. Now this is furled, we can jibe the boat. So jibe the main across and get the boat going on its new trajectory or its new course and then unfurl on this side. So jibing the main nice and slowly doing all I can to minimize the impact as you jibe. There we go, and we've jibed onto our new tack. We straighten up, cleat the main off nicely. Wind's on about 140 now on my left-hand shoulder. So, autopilot back on, and we are ready to unfurl again. This time I'll prepare the starboard Code Zero sheet. Now pulling all the slack through. You can see it's all running nicely there and that is ready to unfurl. Last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure that the port sheet, the lazy sheet, that's the one we were using, is nice and loose so it doesn't get caught when we unfurl. Ah, it's caught because I've left it in the winch. So I'll just take it out of the winch. So that's why you do all your checks because that could have been a bit of a problem if I'd unfurled. The final thing I do is to unlock the furling line on this side so I can see that's going to run nicely, and then we're good to unfurl. Pulling it in until we've got good power, and you can just feel the speed pick up. We've just gone from probably four and a half knots, coming up close to eight now. The boat's really been given a new lease of life with this awesome sail. What a beautiful looking sail. The logo just finishes it off perfectly. I'd like to thank Rolly Tasker Sales, Sam and Greg. Uh, thank you for working with us um, on the Code Zeros that we supply for a lot of our clients. Uh, it's really great to be offering such a good product from an Australian company for our Australian clients. That just about culminates the video on the Code Zero flying. It's a lot of fun, this sail. There's a bit to it. So it's important to really plan your maneuvers and really think about what you're going to do. The best place to practice is not Sydney Harbour. There are a lot of boats all over the shop. So go offshore, three, four miles off, plenty of room when it's nice and light wind and have a go. My name is Joe Fox from the team at TMG Yachts. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Do like and subscribe if you did enjoy and you want to see more lagoon, sailing, catamaran related content. Until next time. Do not leave it until you're 200 meters away from the nudist beat and the furling drum is unlocked. Let's unfurl the code zero. The drum is not unlocked. Okay, straight back where we were, just so, like, we want it to go like a wampa, you know, the wampa.